All right. Um, great. And uh, and uh, I don't know, Arthur, do you want to kick us off and sort of set our our agenda and mission for the call? Honestly, I'm quite drained after another hour and a half call we had in, in the contribution tracking in, initiative, figuring out how to track all the amazing inputs that people are, are doing coronavirus. So I'll, I'll let you lead it. Okay, well, actually, I'll, I'll jump in because I'm, I'm a little uh, late to the game for this call. So maybe one of the folks who, uh, <clears throat> who has been more engaged in the conversation that was leading up to it um, to sort of explain, explain some of our goals and what we're doing going through this values, principles, missions uh, document. Where, where do we want to be by the end of the call, I think is the, is the key question. And what, what things do we want to have sort of figured out who's in what's, what's in whose court? My understanding was that it was because Bianca had listed a bunch of things and we didn't have item three. That's what I came on for. <laughs> item three being what are the projects yeah. and what, what are those vertical projects and, and where are they and what's the status and who sort of who's work. I think it's not just organizational, but I don't know. I barely, am, I've had barely been in touch with Colonel Rye for two weeks. But I have this general feeling that there's an existential crisis going on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good wording of it. And the existential crisis is actually because of how much stuff is being worked on in different clusters and teams. And we're, we're not even like, we're not able to describe all of these things that are happening. And we understand that a lot of this happening, but once, you know, we try to explain it, it's just like, it's impossible. And that's the challenge that Bianca and Shirley are facing uh, because they're creating the CRM, basically the central source for all the people uh, that we have in the community. And they're attempting to attribute people to specific teams or projects. And for, for us to be doing that successfully, we also have to understand what those projects actually do. And you know, for AI-powered literature review project, it's actually very easy because you, Kathy, created that amazing summary as a result of you know, interactions with everyone. But not every project has been fortunate to, to have a person that is able to package the information. But see, I still feel like that package is pretty flaky <laughs> around the edges. I mean, it may be a summary, but... It's better I, than nothing. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Um, but I, I have another question. Is there the existential crisis? Are people leaving? Are people finding it hard to understand? Are they sharing this sense that they don't understand what's happening and and going back to work, for one thing? Oh, I think we he froze. I think he's there. Yeah, yeah I, I think that is something that's happening a bit. And I think both, I mean, both people going back to work, but I think some of it is, you know, we had when we were, when Kaggle round one was our, was our target, everybody had a really clear sense of here's exactly what we're doing. These are the four tasks. This is the deadline. Um, and that was providing a huge amount of momentum. And I think that, um, yeah, the, the mixture of others and the people solidly already working on a task, um, not having ideas of what the tasks are that, that people are doing. I mean, the major projects that is, um, is, is a challenge. It seems to me like there's at least three different challenges. And one is um, having a sense of what those projects are so that we can be internally organizing. Um, it seems like a second challenge is having, and again, it doesn't have to be all of them, but even one or two of them that are furthest along being well enough to find that we're able to communicate those out in terms of out outreach to organizations who we might be wanting to partner with. But I think beyond both of those, I like the way you say it, Catherine, in terms of a sort of an existential crisis. I think that there's a piece that simply is, is around how do teams relate to one another and to the overall group? Um, and you know, is there an expectation around reporting or around um, some form of, of not just transparency, but, but clarity and sort of snapshots of what's going on with the different teams? Um, and I, I feel like it's been a little while that that's been a bit of a, a an ongoing issue. Um, and that that's one of the ones that we really, if we can, if we can sort that one out, it feels like the rest of them will kind of come together. That's my impression. I'm curious what each of your impressions is from kind of the, the facet of Corona Y that you're sitting at. I'm barely a dabbler, so I should shut up. <laughs> Not at all. I think you, I think you, you, you pegged right on to um, what, what one of the key issues is. I think sometimes being a dabbler 
lets you see more clearly what's going on than the people who are, who are stuck right in the hundred percent. I agree, actually. So maybe while you could bring your perspective as the person that um, has a capacity to make, you know, connections and meaningful partnerships, but lacks this specific, you know, descriptive way to even explain what is happening in here and how um, we can connect to the external world. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so when I sense into what is happening in the world uh, that we are, uh, and, and, and interrupt if I'm not answering your question. So, but what, I, what I'm sensing into what's happening in the world giving, let's say, my, my background and my involvement in, in changes and transitions is that uh, a huge unprecedented transformation of, of uh, all systems, uh, apparently. We're talking about energy, we're talking about health, we're talking about mobility, all catalyzed now more deeply through this pandemic, because that hits us all personally. Um, so in, 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 climate change is maybe even more existential threat, but that not really felt personally for everybody in the world. Not yet. If, if it's all right, well, I'm, I'm just going to check. I, I think that that's a key part. I think maybe, um, and let me know if this is right, Arthur, um, that were you asking around sort of in where you sit between making making these partnerships and having these networks and yeah. having your knowledge of Corona Y that you do and being at that place of the the lack that we're having of um, where are the bottlenecks for you in terms of talking to those other networks or the yes okay in terms of yes detail around what Corona you're, you're stressing me Daniel because you're asking me to be <laughs> practical <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah. <clears throat> so there a is a good example, there... and I'll, I'll also chime in for a second. Um, yeah. For example, Wout has a very meaningful connection to the uh, Marcelo Palazzi, who is a f uh, founder of like B B Lab in Europe and uh, all kinds of like philanthropy type yeah. of connections. Yeah. But it's impossible for him to even like to make a meaningful connection because unless he jumps on a call with us and we kind of brain dump uh, everything yeah. that is happening, there is no way to explain what's happening. Uh, yeah, well, I was about to say that, that um, no, this is possible because there is a, amongst external partners, uh, uh, and that may differ somewhat, there is a felt sense of urgency, momentum and uh, no, somehow knowing by intuition more than by, by fact or by science that this is the time to, to collaborate, to, come, to go into collaboration. That's, that's a core quality of a mature ecosystem instead of the competition, which we're moving out now from, in a way, uh, at least for the unhealthy part. And um, what they need is to recognize, maybe just by, by a few key words, what we are about and that, that, that it resonates with what they feel like, what is now at stake, what is important, what is to bond on. And that's about radical transparency. That is about aiming high, being purposeful, uh, going cooperative, open, uh, join forces. So it's about this, this language of collaboration. Okay. Stop liquor. Yeah. Sorry. Small interruption. Oh, good. <laughs> um, he's about to go on vacation for a week. So I have my peace and rest. No, just kidding. Um, so these are the key words. This is the language we must use. We were referring in a previous session about this pattern language, uh, Daniel. But this is about a different uh, vocabulary. It's about 
uh, resonating with we'd like to go into collaboration in a purposeful way you see that expressed in 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 in, in statements of purpose in, in framing the goals in terms of sdgs mm -hmm. so when we're referring to sdgs when we're referring to these these keywords explicitly in what we communicate that's important secondly i think it do be a kind of uh, uh, practical, precise, focused on what we're doing, what our practice is, the tools we use, the, the things we aim at, some some rough, precise, concise project outline, outlines. That is important to connect the conditions to connect. Um, well. Yeah, and, and maybe thirdly, uh, uh, oh, thirdly, I don't know if it's an English, proper English word, but anyway, um, is, is uh, having um, a trusted connection a priori, because there is not only urgency and momentum, so uh, a chaotic phase, this is dissolving the old system and at the same time emerging a new system, it's, it's important to have a trusted connection. Okay, now we'll, I will connect up with you because I know you or you know somebody who is also into the same thing. So use our networks as well in terms of operational intelligence, who is doing what, Bianca? Yeah. Uh, so using the networks, language, the keywords, and some, some concise outlines, one, two, a four papers or what we're doing, and maybe pointing at some some phases in development we are experiencing or aiming at you know Kaggle we did this now we're busy with these projects but we know well, let's, at least from my perspective the core of our business is organizing tooling collective intelligence making use of all kinds of technologies and that is a key part of the solutions of many many of our challenges we have climate change, biodiversity, etc. They are so complex. So, and in put in display, I, I talked about that with Bianca as well, all the nationalities, the nations, the cultures, the, the, the professions we cover, that is major. So, if a question, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, let me see if, how this feels to people, but it seems to me that there's four key sets of messaging um, and and information that we need um, and that they each have a different place. I started with three and then I sort of Spanish inquisition to myself into realizing there was yet another. But um, the first is mission, vision, values and, and about what you're talking about, this is where that piece is. So that other organizations who are working on that big systems thinking change globally can see where we fit into that ecosystem and how we might be worth um, partnering with and how we'd fit into that kind of a partnership. The second is this piece around pro processes and infrastructure and how we're working to kind of transform or innovate in terms of organization. That's where unmanagement and the JITMA conference and things like that fit in. The third is then products and services, what we have, what we've accomplished that can be used by others that they can then directly plug into. Um, and then the fourth is projects that are in process, the things that we can use for recruiting, uh, expertise, resources, volunteers, any of those sorts of pieces. Um, there's, there's clarity. More, Thank you. Clarity. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it feels like that. And so, we, so the, the two documents that we linked right at the beginning, um, we started with this one that's vision, principles, mission. That's the one that we really need to nail down to, to do point number one. Um, so that I think a lot of the organizations that you're connected with about, that's going to be what they need. Um, and I think, I know for me, it's number three that before I can try to reach out to ministers of health, before I can reach out to like, I have like medical community in Montreal who I can be reaching out with other people like that. And before I can do more outreach to them, I have to be able to really clearly tell them, you know, check out this link, see what this tool is and how that can be effective. And then, and then let's have a conversation. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll stop great. talking. I've been dominating. <laughs> to add to that, yeah. Thank you for, for clarifying my, <laughs> the mist I created. Yeah, so uh, what I experienced also, there's a lot of enthusiasm and, 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 and willingness to take on these challenges. And at the same time, two things. 
ego comes into play. So uh, here in the Netherlands, for instance, I see a lot of well-known people, you know, from institutions and from networks who are now tremendously, no, that's a Trump word, sorry, uh, in, <laughs> hugely uh, uh, posting, putting up programs, profiling themselves. And there are healthy and unhealthy sides to it. You, I think, hardly the, the, the going beyond your own shadow to just to other people to connect and to go into collaboration. So there's a manifestation, but a lack of collaboration. And that last point, that's my second point, is that in a way logical giving the stack of value systems, the stack of, the stack of abilities to think holistically, integrally, systemically, is that there are just a few, for instance, just a few people, just 1% of the people who kind of have a glimpse of the whole picture and, and let's say being able then to, to and to recognize all the pieces of the puzzle, the possible connections, the synergies, and then suggest that, to propose that in terms of, I can, I can add value to you. We can create synergy together. So if we come up as Corona Y, having this much intelligence and, and all these qualities, also with a kind of framing story about how these bits and pieces can fit together, you know, referring to developments like open science, like cooperatives and such, referring to these keywords again, then we, we add value, we enhance the possibility of partnerships by pointing out where we can have these synergies. Uh, so, yeah, that's my take on it, at least. No, that's great. Um, so a couple of the things I'm throwing into the notes here. So one piece is, is around that internal, that, that pitfall. Um, oh, interesting. Not all of it went into there. Um, but the, there's this pitfall around that, that ego shadow sort of side of thing. And I'll say that I think that side is also um, the whole venture capital world is, is just an amplifier for that, where I, th I think we have to, to be both aware of that internally and then also externally in terms of how we get framed as an organization by others and who we get taken seriously by. Um, and that we want to make sure that we're never, we never have either the reality or the appearance of the sort of the vaporware world where we're talking about like, here's the 28 revolutionary things we're going to do that are going to change the planet. But that then when people drill down to say, awesome, like show me one, like we, ha we have to be able to, we have to be able to say like this one, here's, here's the current state of the discovery engine and here's, you know, try it out. The flagship that is coming out of our shipyard. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's me the problem right now. Is <laughs> Corona yeah. feels a little bit vaporware-ish. Yeah, and I think, I think that's, that's for me is also one of the other key pieces. And I think that, again, if we, can, if we can get that one, like each one of those four things that we sort of identified there, um, there's a tremendous boost of energy we get if we address them. And I think that if we can address that product, that product and services piece, the huge boost is that all the right people can then get more, more interested and more involved, both in terms of organizations who can benefit from what we're doing, but also the right people who can help us tweak and improve what it is we're doing. Because what, the, the more they can see something, you know, when we can, when we can fire something off to a group of people, who are you know, epidemiologists who can then look at it and say, here's four things you're getting wrong, or here's, I have these three concerns with, with how you're approaching it. Um, yeah. We can really improve things then. This is, this is sorry, I, I'd like, I have to switch on my camera again. It, it appears to have some, some human traits like disconnecting when it doesn't like my face. So, um, yeah, this is, this is about being, uh, speaking tongue in cheek. So when I was referring to all those different value systems, social, cultural, we have now dominantly the orange value system and it's about uh, capitalism. Capitalism. And I know that's not a neutral world, but it's, it is about efficiency, about result driven, about target oriented. And there are always to each value system, two sides, an unhealthy side that hampers, let's say, uh, uh, your existence that creates unhealthy life conditions. So in the end, it will threaten you. 
and there are healthy ones. So we have also to appeal to the healthy ones, speaking to venture capitalists, speaking to business organizations. They are where they are now in this system, in transition. So we also have to correct uh, our, our, our word, our, our purpose and our practice in their terms, like being affecting, having these as targets, these goals. And this is not to be measured by the, the degree we have these goals, or have reached these goals, but it's just that word that clicks. So it is about goals and, and results. And then you have these, th this condition for the connection with that group of people you have. So we have to translate indeed our more purposeful, higher order uh, um, vision to various target oriented target audiences, audiences and stakeholders, but I'm talking about different value systems at play. And uh, well, I can help you out with that some, somewhat. <laughs> but yes, um, this is also what I, uh, when I try to, to uh, you call it, um, try out for connection, then there is this hesitance because of efficiency or, or whatever. Can you point me out what they are doing, what they are aiming at, uh, how, they, how, they, how do they make sense in this whole transformation you're talking about? So these are different questions, different answers, and these are indeed to be worded in our mission. That's, that's correct, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and like uh, Dimitri in his very own way points out, <laughs> is that um, maybe we should aim at some not so high end, not so viable external partner connections at first, just to try out in a way how to interact with them and to fine tune our communication, our process of relating to them. That is might might be all be a part of the, 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 the strategy. But okay. Yeah. My yeah, sorry, go ahead, please, Shirley. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna ask why there's talk uh -uh. of engaging with uh, with venture capitalists. Is that because we want funding from them? Or is that because we want to work with them? Like, I feel like part of this is what's making things fuzzy for me is that there's a lot of um, kind of academic approach to this right. at the same time as a VC maybe approach. And I don't think, I don't, oh, sorry. And, and I think, yeah, carry on. I'm keen to know the answer to the VC stuff. I, I, don't, I don't think we're trying to shoot for any VC. I think that it's more... Um, that tends to be the environments in which a lot of things like AI innovation are happening within. And so it's easy to get swept into that mindset, but I don't think that that's where we, I, I think we don't want to go. That pushing way. very hard not to go into that direction uh, for many oh. different reasons. And obviously like if the projects that are being, uh, let's say constructed in Corona Y will decide to take on venture funding, and if those projects are actually like individual projects, they should, like if they feel that's the direction of, of the, the project they want to define. But we as Kernel Y are definitely encouraging the, um, the decentralization and cross-pollination of different investment vehicles. And we've just recently established the funding.coronaY.org, which is not being promoted at all right now, but, um, Daniel, can you let me uh, share a screen? Yeah. Um, but this um, can, or this has potential to become a place where we um, both list out the projects and uh, start, um, start combining different types of funding. And, um, you know, we call it the place where open science meets business models and the fight against COVID-19. But essentially it's, it's ripe for different type of uh, funding vehicles, investors, lenders, grant makers, philanthropists, any kind of um, either individuals or organizations that are willing to dedicate resources to different projects. And that's essentially, you know, the, the list of projects uh, has yet to be defined and that's the, 
one of the, the problems that we're experiencing during this call. Mm -hmm. But um, to answer your, uh, your concern, surely, or a question, we're not specifically looking into VC as a direction of funding. But that's I, cool what you, you mentioned about the funding platform, because I feel like that plays into what we're trying to get from the overall vision, which I guess is the focus of this meeting, is that it's still fuzzy. And I think actually what you've done there might make it less fuzzy. I don't know what the other people think, but I feel like that funding model starts to play into like, why are, what are we doing? Right. What's the value? What are the outcomes that we're, that we're creating by this, by the, you know, the weirdness of, the, of this cool model that we have? So I think, I feel like that's what's missing because I don't, this is my feeling as a story is I can't recommend Corona Y to people yet. to come and join or to partner with because I don't really know what it is. I've been here six weeks and I'm still not sure. Like, so I think that's what I personally want is something that I, because I'm not going to recommend it to the smart, busy people I know to waste their time or to, or if they could be better using their time in other initiatives. So I, that's what I want to know. Yeah. What, uh, very, very real. But this, what are we actually this, doing right now? Well, I think what I'm, I think everybody's saying the same thing. We all need these products and services defined. Is that what everybody's saying? Yeah. For yeah. Journal partnering for recruiting for, uh, for just for vision. understanding what we're doing. So you, you really want more documents like what I wrote, but I don't have time right now. <laughs> yeah, we need more people like you. And that's essentially the first call to action that we have to form. Just like people that have experience and capacity to jump in, document and co-create a vision for specific products and services, because that essentially defines who we are and what the purpose of this collaboration is. I have, I have a thought. Um, my, what I wonder is um, if we essentially use positive reinforcement and what we do is we find any of the teams if any team can give us, like, here's the clear thing, um, and we just do a call-up to say, any team that has something that you feel is ready for people to try to start using, um, let us know. Um, and for any team that does that, we will then throw the coordination weight that exists of Corona Y behind that. That'll, that'll be our next focus, because that's the key thing that we as an organization need. Um, and that, you know, th there's no penalties for any teams that, that aren't doing that, but we can make it very clear that, you know, if say Dan Sosa and the VT team put forward, here's two things that we're doing that, and I mean, they've done a decent job on that products and services job of giving a couple of very clear descriptions of what they're working on and what status it's in, that we then say, great, let's take this one, let's one run this one through all the way that it needs to be before we feel like we can do outreach. And then, um, and then debrief how that went to see how we can improve that process for the next one. But I think that, I think, and it, I think it's natural that we're at this place, but we're, we're sort of, we had our initial burst and then we had a bunch of um, introspection as an organization to figure out who we are. And now we're having a diffused, you know, the mycelium are going out in all directions, trying to figure out what's what. And now the next step is actually having the next burst of energy in a given direction. And, yeah. and maybe that's that's what we need. I and I think to... a big part of it is actually what you're talking about in terms of like exposing some of the internal, you know, kitchen that is happening because, um, you know, the team leads are not always able to assess externally the utility or usefulness or even the, the ability to resonate with external parties and organizations. For example, when Isaac gave us a demo yesterday, I think, or day before yesterday on the general call, that was amazing because what it led to is, for, for instance, a lot of different questions that different people produced and recommended to him, which is obviously a benefit of collaboration. But second of all, it gave us ability to formulate a, a first step of communication with external parties that hey, we're working on this specifically. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like. And here's where we think we can help. And as a result, and the, the context of that project is the forecasting of the pandemic. 
the actual amount of cases. And what I've done is I've assembled the list of different county health professionals, and I just sent an email that, hey, uh, we talked with LA County back in May, but uh, you know we should probably reconnect. And also in the context of all different counties being able to, to battle this crisis, here is a video where we explain what we're wa working on. Here is an image that showcases the prediction, uh, the model that predicts the number of cases. And maybe that, that's enough for them to resonate. But who knows? We, we won't see until we try. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at the same time, I, 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 I could not really imagine that Isaac being on his own would have a uh, um, uh, no, let's 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 rephrase that. Um, this is material that is telling it all in a way, and and is inviting. Uh, but I think Isaac, for instance, in that case must be paired with somebody else to have an effective effective interaction communication with an external partner. Yep. Uh, um, and, and it has to do with the phases that uh, the, the stages, so to speak, that, that uh, Daniel was, uh, was, was pointing at. We have bright minds, but they may maybe not always, let's say, the best marketeers or salespersons in, in conventional. The worst, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the thing that comes up for me a little bit, I don't know if this is because I'm around academics too much, is um, like he's doing some kind of forecasting, but there's forecasting being done. I mean, everywhere lots of people are forecasting what makes his better what makes it unique what makes us more confident in it how does it compare and you know that's why people write academic papers they say here's what existed before here's what i'm doing different let me show you how it's better mm -hmm. and and that piece is kind of like to me i mean not that you have to write an academic paper i'm just saying you have to make the case yeah uh, that you've done something that's better than what somebody can get somewhere else yeah. either better or more applicable to specific scenarios or, or free you know all those things. yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah i, I, I agree yeah. i resonate with that but some some people in in let's say in the intersection between ict and science that i know that i speak do also have the same question so there are a lot of people on this and and government agencies and so on what value what value do you add what's your what your edge so this is really something that we need to 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 point out um yeah well so maybe we can take it. Isaac, <laughs> his team and and actually uh, because they they wrote a paper uh, a paper i think they submitted a uh, abstract to a conference and they're going to present this method of transfer learning for pandemic for forecasting so there is something there is something that even reads in academic way. Now it's our job to transform it in something less academic and more practical for counties to be able to resonate with. Yeah, and mentioning that submission of that paper or whatever it is, that's useful as well. That's marketing, that's attractive, that resonates with some, some, some audience. So these, these, these nuggets must also be collected, you know, that you can just list your exposure, your papers, your publications, and, and such, that, that, that rings a bell, I think. Yep. Yeah. But again, like I still, I feel like a major thing that I'm missing is the outcome. Is not, so I know that Isaac's done cool stuff, but is that actually valuable to the community, to the community we're trying to serve? Um, and has it hasn't been validated in real world. And I'm conscious of that because we've had so many people coming out in New Zealand, even we had people coming out with AI that was going to help something. And it turned out to be a bit of a, like, not very true. And that gives people some mistrust of science and mistrust of tech. Right. And so I, yeah, I don't even know if Isaac's stuff is just like a theoretical paper or it's actually real world applicable. Um, and that I think again comes back to the vision, mission and values is. And guess what? Even Z Isaac doesn't know that. And he doesn't know if that's applicable or <laughs> useful. And the only way to validate that is, you know, science, you just experiment. 
you know? Well, and I, I think that comes a little bit also to how, how we do our approach, um, like what is Corona Y and what are the projects in relationship to Corona Y? So, you know, if I was thinking of this, you know, at the Emerging Media Lab, if we have a project that's proposed, um, we'll have a key document people have to fill out beforehand, which includes like, what are you adding to the field? Um, what, are the, what are the challenges that you see facing with this? How long do you think it's gonna take? What technologies are you using for it? And like, how are you measuring success? What, what are your key performance indicators that are going to show that this was a project that has done well? And that that can even be spectacularly failing, but documenting it well. Um, and I think that those are a couple of the pieces where we need to give each project the flexibility to do whatever it is that they're doing while giving them enough structure and rigor that we're able to, to take whatever it is that they're doing and move it forward and to be able to know when, when a project is at the point of taking it and moving it forward. Mm. And the uh, projects have been going long enough that they've had that kind of exploration stage and that flex to, to find where there's an opportunity but now maybe we need to focus them a little bit more and give more clarity. So, sh so have we decided is that <laughs> I'm always the person that wants to have like an action to go do. I don't want to talk that much. <laughs> so have we decided Isaac and start with uh, identifying some of those key things, maybe that you just spoke about Dan, the, um, you know, the, the one pager that describes how what they're doing is different than what's come before how it might be valuable, what might be next, where the pitfalls yeah. might be. Is that what we're deciding or? <laughs> yeah, it, might, it makes sense. I'm happy to start with that. I'd like to add to it. If, if so much intelligence is, is, is collected in, some, in, in a team, is gathered in a team, they, they should have a sense of what are the main themes in, in the field we are working in, in professionally and in terms of uh, those who uh, we are serving and um, and ask them also what are the main themes the issues right now uh, to know about these 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 keywords these buzzwords these themes that these external partners will resonate with apart from these structure items to give a sense what is resonating now in that field? That is, yeah, okay. Uh, not, oh great, yeah, yeah, Catherine, that's great if you want to put those words. Oh, I don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, and they sure. they exactly. May... Also, uh, to add to that, we have already asked the teams to fill out uh, a form recently. That was mostly just for the information of what are the teams doing, so we can put it on the website make it more visible so maybe uh, sending them another form saying now fill out these fields is not the best approach yeah. or considering only four teams have responded to it i do think probably yes this will need to be worked out in a conversation together with the team leads or parts of the team at least and and help them fill out the form just sending it out is probably not going to work yeah the but forms are actually the the most terrible way I agree in terms with that of also. like extracting. Carry on. So the yeah, way because... I would do it is with interviews, basically. Yeah, yeah, and and also because so often the te technical teams don't know what the value is of what they're doing. They the value is of the technical stuff, yeah. not the value to the real world or to the vision of this. Well, they, um, don't they want to know? <laughs> I don't know how people. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I don't think that's. I think they do want to know. Yeah. I know from the technical teams I work with, they're like so focused on awesome technical stuff that they, that they, your brains are, so, well, this is my feeling, your brains are so in that you forget that there's this amazing application yeah. outside of this cool. And what's the motivation for them to fill out that application? Stuff like, that you're doing. And also it takes up a lot of your brain. Yeah. 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 I think we definitely need to work with them. And I'd love to do that. If I, if Bianca, are you doing some of that? Are you? <laughs> I will be, um, and also uh, I, I had a chat with Andrea yesterday who uh, is looking to get re-engaged and she would be super interested in doing some of, uh, some of that as well. And actually um, picking up what you were saying earlier, Daniel, um, she's super interested in helping us work out how the projects are connected. Fantastic. And, and creating this kind of overall 
knowledge graph kind of visualization of everything that's going on in coronavirus. So Amazing. definitely looking forward to having her on, uh, yeah, help, help with that as well. But yes, absolutely. I'd love to do some of those interviews. And I think those interviews themselves will be great content as well. Yeah. Um, just speaking with the teams and asking them these questions and working out what, like how this relates and where they are in their validation process. Um, so definitely we should be doing this and we should be publishing that and then we can derive some kind of structured information about the teams from that. Mm. Um, and probably using uh, your, your uh, write-up that you did, Kathy, as a, as a bit of a template because I think that worked incredibly well in terms of I wouldn't this swear by it. I would <laughs> feel free to modify. <laughs> No, for me, this was like, I read it and was like, yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. It's like, where do we come from? What are we trying to do? This is what's happening. How does it link to the result? I think there are errors and incompleteness in there, a huge amount, but. Well, and this is actually um, a really big other point that I have because um, I wanted to have this meeting for me to get the context and understand why we're trying to do this. And I think I've, I've got this in the conversation that we, already had, but um, we have a lot of stuff already. And so my big question is, how ready does it need to be before we publish it? Right. Because there is stuff that can go out or that's almost ready to go out. And yes, maybe there's errors and it's incomplete, but how, how complete do we need it to be? That's a good question. Are you talking about for what audience? Yeah, so audience is one thing and what we're trying to achieve with it is another thing. But in terms of just how we're presenting ourselves on our own website, at the moment, there's very little. And I think we have things that yeah. can go in there, accepting that it's not complete. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, At least a, an 80% general overview of, I think it would be a good thing to have that, that ready, available. Uh, in, 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 a, in a week, you know, to, to speed things up, to get some focus. And um, I think that will not be to the detriment of, let's say, more detailed profiling to specific audiences of specific um, uh, connections. And by the way, I, I sense that now various people are, let's say, tapping into uh, the, the, the expected knowledge of the people in the project about what they're doing and uh, what they're aiming at and such. Is there, um, to a certain degree, a, a, a danger of lack of coordination that now, that now will be interviewed three times? Or, I mean, that might be... I feel like there'll be a plan, though. <laughs> We're like, the teams are already listed and we can start with the four that filled in their surveys because we already have some context we, and experiment we, with course, those. Oh, we who but, want to do it, maybe. Anyone? Yeah. Because we, there's this... Who uh, wants to interview, we could pair up so that we have action. Doing, uh, to get some outline and lists and definitions, we have uh, a need for, for um, a piece of, of text and, and that we communicate more generally in, in on, a, on a website. We have the need for documents for specific, maybe for specific relations. That that I mean, um, can we combine those efforts to, and, and and merge them into one? Let's say, can I have an hour of your time in lead and then hit it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. One, one thing, and this is sort of, this is looping back a little bit, but that I might propose. So what I have here is for, so we, we need to develop that sort of one pager and whether that's, it doesn't have to be a form people fill out, but we need the end product to be something that we have that's like solid data about a project. Um, then we need to do with interviews. I think that another piece that'll help is this piece around defining our, pro our process and phases more. If it's all right, I'm just gonna quickly share something. Again, this is from the Emerging Media Lab. Um, but to just sort of show our process that we go through. So, you know, we identify what it is we're gonna be doing. As people are coming in, there's demos, there's training, there's not knowledge exchange, all the things needed for the teams to gel. Um, 
Then there's this incubation stage, and that tends to go through two different phases. So the first phase is just proof of concept. It's showing like, yep, we can do this. I'd say our Kaggle round one essentially was all proof of concept. Um, and then after proof of concept, then this whole incubation stage happens again um, for some projects going into like a minimum viable project product. Um, and that, that that's the point at which it then, and so there's, there's like these, these defined demarcations where a proof of concept um, gets the thumbs up and it says like, yes, you're ready to now be an MVP. Here's what that means and here's how that's different. Um, and then it can be kicked out the door into whether we're applying for grants, whether we're, we're trying to partner with industry, however we do that kind of a thing. And then coming to whatever the outputs are gonna be. And I feel like if we could have a defined process and then I'm trying to think how we, because again, keeping with the bottom up ethos of Corona Y, I want us to be making it as easy as possible for teams to engage and move things forward, but I don't want it to be too much act. I mean, to the extent we need it, but active handholding of like shepherding people through the processes. I think what we're looking for ideally is for teams to be able to have a clear sense of what they need to do to move things forward and for people to be ready to, um, to work with them on that. But ideally, it's the team that sends up a flag and says, like, we think we're at proof of concept um, and we'd love to get, you know, the community to look at that rather than having us having to sit on each project and every week say, like, so where are you at right now? What's going on? Because I, th I think that'll lead us down down a, a, a path of a lot more work. So um, kind of telling teams, you know, throw up a flag when you're here, throw up a flag when you're here. Yep. And if you're having anything that's blocking you from getting there, let us know. And then we can fit, we can work with that team to, to figure out how we how we support them, and so there's they're still checking in periodically with teams to make sure that we are giving them the, the support and the resources that they need and finding out what's going on. Um, but the more we're able to make that something that is pushed from the teams rather than something that has to be pulled, because as soon as we have a group that's having to do that pulling, we move back into a, a, a management model, um, which which isn't where we're trying to go. Yeah, and it's interesting because it's like you just ensure that uh, the team flows in the right direction and you periodically check in like are you, you know, are you to the next stage? Is there anything you need help with? And basically by that assessment, you automatically get the progress report. Yeah. But I think what I, I think what Wood, Wood John, is that how you say it, was um, saying was sort of in that one hour interview, can we get multiple products, right? Something that goes on the website, something that maybe becomes a working document that we keep updating, something that, uh, you know, for different purposes, um, yeah. which I think would be a good idea. And yeah, then maybe you like hand the document back over to the team and say, keep this updated <laughs> or call me when it needs more, you know. Something like that. Yeah, but I mean, even just doing these interviews or picking up the idea, was it Isaac who proposed it, doing um, bi-weekly demos for each team? I mean, that will actually show these flags. So even if the teams themselves are not aware of, other people just watching them demo will see, ah, oh, cool, it seems like you moved from proof of concept stage to this next stage, and how can we help you with this? So without Nick trying to managing that, manage them just to see what they're doing and doing these regular interviews and showcasing it, I think it will show it. Yeah. Mm. So which of these tasks are things that people are interested in sort of taking point on and, and moving, moving that piece along? Is there someone who's excited about that interview piece? I definitely want to do the interviews and I'd be happy to. I think uh, the one page of the questions we're asking should very be a collaboration. Um, so we're getting everybody's aspects in there of, of things that we wanted to ask. And then uh, I'd absolutely love to do some interviews. And I think Andrea's interested in that as well, or ask her if she wants and, to. And I'm... Yeah, I will if I have time. Right now I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Fair enough. I'm sorry, if really? we can get your help with the, the questions piece and the oh. one page, that would be fantastic, I think. I usually just have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and Shirley, Tr which were you saying? Uh, I'd love to, to do the same. So maybe if I and maybe Andrea can work on a, a little bit of a framework or a, an approach 
with the list of questions that we might or might not ask and the uh, artifacts that will come out of it, whether it's websites or update, whatever it is, the, the products that we're going to come out with. Um, yeah, I'd, I think that will work well if there's three of us that look at the questions and then ask the questions maybe together and then maybe alone. And start with, I would suggest we start with those four that answered the survey. And, and maybe if, as, is Isaac one of those four? Whoever, the people that, are, that you know, maybe that Daniel and I. I would guess that he didn't fill it out. To as, know that our lucky some. Yeah, so we can start with, start with and refine our process with the people that are like the closest to something great or the most motivated uh, and then spread out from there. And then also I might be a good person afterwards to check in with people regularly and say update the document or tell us where you're at. Yeah. That sounds great. So would maybe a next step be for Bianca, Shirley and Andrea, the three of you, to find a time for a call to sort of coordinate how you want that to work. Yeah. And then just let us know what, what you need in terms of, of, again, coordination or support to, to make that stuff move forward. I also just wanted to, to, to name and celebrate that I think that we're going from a neat spot of um, folks like myself and Arthur and Vautian who are doing a lot of the broad stroke pieces mm -hmm. to folks like Shirley and Catherine and Bianca and, and Andrea, you like build, like actually building the stuff, build, building those connective links and building the, the infrastructure that allows things to move to that next step. And so I just want to say how hugely appreciative I am of you all stepping in with exactly the skill set that's needed for things to move to the next step. So thank you. Cool. I'd be glad to be on that call with you guys, but I'm not sure what I can do. I think you can push. Sure, help. So I I'd can definitely say that you can ask questions, and that's your superpower. <laughs> I've experienced that. And <laughs> I was going to ask for a weird thing. Arthur, I know you haven't published the funding thing yet, but if you can give us a screenshot, even of like how you've described, you, you can go on funding.coronawide.org. It's already live. Oh, is it ready? Okay, cool. I feel like I feel like that described the kind of big picture quite well for me to. Uh, but I might be wrong. I need to read it in more closely. Yeah, it has some, uh, you know, projects that are not, um, you know, it's just like, because the platform has been built by, by Audrey, she volunteered to give um, basically a license. They, the, the platform that she has been building for like 12 years for impact investing um, uh, stuff. And she, she deployed it for like India and other countries where she um, done some prof professional impact investing. So right now you can see some of the projects that are just, you know, sample projects from there. Cool, that's awesome. Cool. Bianca, did you get what you needed from this meeting? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think my a question here is, now that we've kind of have a plan for that side, what is happening with the vision, mission, principles? Let's have another call on that. Uh, because it, I mean it connects, right? So yeah. yeah. But okay. Somebody well, should write up. We do not, okay, so maybe more practical question is: we do not, we are not looking to have that part up on the website before we can start publishing about products and services. I think that's the first step. Uh, let's uh, let's schedule a, s a second meeting and let's just decide when when works for us uh, this week. And I'll prepare a little bit better with what we already have uh, to have a more, uh, more streamlined meeting specifically to the, the vision principles and values. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, what, what days work for everyone? Not Tuesday. Okay. Uh, Wednesday? It's probably not a meeting for me, I don't think. Um, if you want to join, you can. Yeah. So Wednesday, how about Wednesday, Shirley, Bianca, Danielle? For me? Yeah. We have a one to two meeting on Wednesday. I would be free anytime between two and four. This is PST that I'm talking. Mm, probably to support for New Zealand time, we can do early, right? Um, well, if I can't be, I know, <laughs> if I can't be there, then go ahead and I'll watch the video. 
But um, so you're saying, wait, I have to convert in my head. So uh, you're saying Wednesday. Wednesday. What time is it for you right now? It's not nearly nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. So, so you can do earlier if you want. Mm. We could how do, about Thursday, maybe? Thursday would be perfect for me. And my Thursday is wide open. So how about the same time on Thursday? Perfect. Okay. Lock it in. Perfect. And, uh, and while I assume the same uh, works for you. That's okay. And it gives yep. a great deadline to have uh, at least a draft of that one page and the questions ready until then. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are, are you, yeah, are I'm you sending out the invite. Good. All right. Um, Sounds good. The notes from the chat, Daniel, do you put them somewhere or otherwise I'm going to quickly copy them? Um, why don't I quickly, yeah, if you want to quickly copy those and then we can just paste those into the, uh, into the ops or the, the yeah. sort of a suitable channel. Um, and yeah, if, if anybody does want to go through after at some point um, and annotate, and I, again, that's one of those things that at some point we should do an active recruit for again, is for a couple of people who, who like, who enjoy doing that sort of thing. I'm just going through the videos and being able to annotate, you know, here's a couple of the core things that are there. But either that or minutes would be useful. I've tried to do, I'll try to get better in our meetings at actually in the chat, putting rough minutes of what it is that we're talking about, so. I don't find those synopses with the time slots very useful. Does anybody? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, For me it's great because I know if I'm, I don't have much time, but I want to quickly check on something. You'll jump to something? Oh. Yeah, same. It depends on the, the purpose of, of, you know, your exploration for information, because if you are like me and you observe like eight, you know, calls per day, you, you don't really have time to watch eight hours of video. Yeah. All right. Um, it sounds like we've gotten through the sort of where we, where we need to get to for end of this call. Is there any other key things that feel like they're a part of this meeting that we should yeah, go we want to set up the next call for Bianca and Shirley and Andrew and me? Oh, yes, for us three. Yeah. Um, well, it's maybe tricky without can Andrew. Can do that the same time tomorrow? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, uh, hold on. Yeah, I can do that. And I'll message Andrea to see if she wants to join. Um, cool. But I know she is also happy for her just to go along and like update her. She just wants to get going and do stuff. Let's okay. meet doing. If we uh, can do the same time tomorrow, that'd be awesome. And then what? Um, we can maybe start a document today to seed it with questions from this chat even. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably go to bed. All right, sounds good, guys. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll do that while you're okay. sleeping. Bye, Arthur. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Cool. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. you.